Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith, Photog J the Great. As you guys can tell from the title of this video, um, I'm obviously a fan of the Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, of course that doesn't mean that I don't have anything negative to say about it, um, <laughs> which you guys probably believe that because you know that I always, you know, I'm kind of picky, so I've always got something that uh, I don't like. But I am going to be, I am going to be optimistic first. I'm going to tell you the things that I do like about it first, and then we'll get to the stuff that I'm just kind of like, eh, you know, about. So, uh, first of all, um, as I've been saying in a lot of my videos, um, I do believe that there's going to be a lot of convergence between still photography and video and cinematography and all that. I think it's all going to be kind of more of a multimedia type experience. And so you can kind of see that happening. Um, <clears throat> one of the greatest ways you can see that happening, of course, well, you can see it in the cameras themselves. You can see how um, all the DSLRs and mirrorless cameras and you know even compact point and shoots, you can see their, cap their capabilities definitely shift more towards video as well. Um, more manual controls in video. You know, a lot of cameras can do 1080p at 60 frames a second and, and on and on and on it goes. But you definitely can see this happening in software as well. Now, <clears throat> as time goes on, we are going to be doing some videos that cover specifics of what I've made here, um, as far as uh, Lightroom, Photoshop, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, right now, of course, I'm just going to kind of talk about it. Um, <clears throat> in Photoshop CS6 and Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5, you can definitely see a lot more video-centric features. So if you look at, uh, say for example, you look at something like Lightroom 4, you know, you can actually do a lot of, uh, well, I say a lot, you can do a little bit of work with video as well. You can do some basic things as far as trimming clips. Um, there's also ways for you to be able to apply develop presets to video clips as well as still photos. So you can do that. Um, in Lightroom 5, Adobe has now added the ability to actually um, you can actually do like slideshows where you can mix video and still photography. And I'm still in the process of playing with uh, Lightroom 5 Beta right now, so anyways, I'm getting all studied up so I can get ready for some videos on that. Um, in Photoshop CS6, there's a similar thing as well. You know, you actually have a video timeline, um, you know, um, workspace within, uh, within Photoshop. <clears throat> and so it's possible once again to apply you know certain effects and adjustment layers and things like that to video and you can do some basic video editing there so all these programs that were traditionally associated with still photography have video capabilities as well um, however as more and more people start doing more things with video um, if you're just doing basic things with video it's amazing what you can do with video in Photoshop CS6 and in Lightroom alone however if you get more advanced and you want to be able to do even cooler stuff. You know, we always want to do cooler stuff as photographers. Um, but if you get to that point, then you're going to need something more advanced to handle your video. You're going to need Premiere, and you're going to, you know, need uh, you're going to need After Effects perhaps. And you know, it may not even hurt to learn how to make DVD title menus and stuff in Encore. So, on and on and on it goes. Well, this is one of the things I like about the Creative Cloud. Um, if you're used to just working with still photography and maybe in the past, you know, we've all seen Adobe's other software packages, you know, you've got the master collection that gives you everything and they've got, you know, um, web design premium and, and all that. It's basically just different bundles of their software. Um, of course, the cost is quite a bit higher. Um, I believe that, uh, I believe that here in the U.S., the master collection was going for around twenty eight hundred dollars, somewhere in that somewhere in that range. Uh, if you want to get all the software, um, and the uh, the upgrades were about half that. So once you bought the software, you know if you upgraded later on, you could upgrade for about half that price. Um, with the Creative Cloud, if you've gotten to the point to where you want to use a lot of the other Adobe applications, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Um, if you're not an existing Adobe customer, $50 a month gets you all the software. So you can download uh, Premiere CS6, you can download Photoshop CS6, After Effects CS6, you know, you can get everything that you need. So if you started to work 
uh, more with video and you want to take advantage of all the other software as well, it's a lot less expensive to do that now. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a big deal, uh, in my opinion. <clears throat> One other thing that's a big deal for me is in the past, if you were the type of user that uses, uh, let's say you have, let's say that you use, uh, you know, you use a Windows machine and you use a Mac. You know, you're not a fanboy for either one and you see the purposes of both and you want to use your Adobe software on both platforms. Um, in the past, that was a bit troublesome. Uh, now, some Adobe software, such as Lightroom and Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements, you know, those programs are dual platform. So you can have one copy of the software, one license key, and it will work on both. However, <clears throat> most of Adobe software isn't like that. So if you've got Photoshop, uh, if you've got Premiere, if you've got After Effects, Illustrator, um, any of the other software, it's not like that at all. Now for that software, <clears throat> the license key is platform specific. So basically, if you have a Mac and you have a PC, and let's say you wanna put Photoshop CS6 on both of them, um, well, you'd actually have to have two separate licenses. So you'd actually have to buy two copies of the software. You'd have to buy one for, you'd have to buy one for Windows, and you'd have to buy one for your Mac. So that's definitely very, very expensive. Um, on the Creative Cloud, though, I found out that <clears throat> just like with past versions of the uh, Adobe uh, software, you can still have your software installed on two machines. However, with the Creative Cloud, you can have, you can actually have, um, you know, one of those machines can be one platform, the other machine can be the other. So, for example, if I want to be able to put uh, Photoshop CS6 on my Windows desktop, I can do that. And then I can also put the same software on my Mac Book Pro as well. So that works out works out very, very well. So it avoids having to, you know, having to go with two separate licenses there. So that that is something that I like. Um, now I guess we should get to the things that I'm concerned about. Okay. So yeah, if you're if you're like me and you're like, oh yeah, you know, I've got a Mac and a PC. Or you're like, okay, I just, I just want all the software. You know, I think that, you know, if you fall into that camp, you're, you're, you know, you're gonna be very, very well uh, pleased with the Creative Cloud. However, <clears throat> I can see a lot of people's concern. You know, if you are not a professional user, and, uh, you know, you don't care, or if you just don't care about, you know, I know a lot of people that are still using Photoshop CS4 or even CS3 because maybe. Maybe they downloaded, uh, you know, maybe they've got the same camera since then. They don't need the latest RAW converters, or perhaps they use the DNG converter to convert all their files to DNG. And so they don't care about having the latest version of the software. Uh, so if you're in that camp, I can see where this could be a bit troublesome because, you know, especially if you're just using Photoshop or something like that, to have to constantly fork over 20 bucks a month, I can see where you'd be very, very put off by that, um, especially if you don't necessarily need the latest version. Um, however, if you're in a situation like me, of course, I'm reviewing a lot of different cameras and shooting with a lot of different cameras. And so, um, yeah, you know, I always need the latest RAW converter. And uh, of course, you guys probably already know, if you've got any experience with Adobe at all, the RAW converters only go to a certain version of Photoshop and then they kind of stop. So, like for example, if you've got, let's say you've got CS5, um, the latest uh, RAW converter, which I believe is, uh, I just released it, I believe it's like 8.1 or something now. Well, 8.1 won't work on CS5. You know, you have to have CS6 for that to work. So if you do fall in that category where you do need regular updates, that sort of thing, Creative Cloud is going to be better for you. Um, if, you're, if you're just going to stick with one version of Photoshop and you usually run it for three, four years, yes, I can see where you'd be, frankly, quite pissed off by the whole Creative Cloud thing. Um, so yeah, single users that are just using one single application, I do think that Adobe should still give you, you know, a different option for that because, you know, not everyone wants to pay 20 bucks a month if they're just an occasional user of Photoshop or if they're used to holding on to an older version for, you know, a, a longer duration. Uh, the other thing that I have uh, that I think is a very serious problem with the whole Creative Cloud thing, well, is quite simply, 
simply the name, the name Creative Cloud. Um, it's almost like it's almost like the marketing guys and the technical guys at Adobe just like had a fight, but the marketing guys won. Um, to explain my statement, um, it seems like right now everything that has the name cloud stamped on it is like, you know, it's like a, an it word these days. And, uh, you know, anything that's an it, anything, is probably missing a couple letters before it, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's like the, the it word these days, you know, cloud. Let's store your data on the cloud. Let's, let's converge in the cloud. You know, all this marketing BS. Um, the problem is, I think that the, term, the name Creative Cloud gives all of Adobe's customers, I think it gives everyone the wrong idea. And I think that's where a lot of people are really, really upset. Um, a lot of people hear the term Creative Cloud and they think that, okay, you know, if I buy, if I subscribe to this cloud service, you know, a lot of people have a lot of really, you know, negative connotations with that, with that term Creative Cloud. You know, they think that their data has to be stored in the cloud. Um, they think that uh, the software doesn't install on your computer anymore and that it just like runs in a web browser. Um, there's just all sorts of negative things that people think. They think, you know, if they, if they, if they stop subscribing to the service, they think that, uh, you know, they think that their files will just vanish into thin air. Um, the good news is none of that is the case. If you subscribe to the Adobe Creative Cloud, basically your software installs on your machine just like it always has. Um, it looks exactly the same, smells exactly the same, feels exactly the same. Um, all that works exactly the way it would. Uh, your files are still stored on your computer and uh, it still works. Pretty much everything works exactly the same way. Um, and no, you don't have to maintain a constant internet connection whenever you're using, uh, using the software. Um, as best I can tell, it just simply it just simply uh, authenticates, you know, once a month. Um, you know, so I guess if you don't pay your Adobe bill, <laughs> then they'll just turn off your software, which uh, I've been subscribed to the software for about three weeks now, so I'll see exactly how that authentication works and report back. But uh, no, you don't have to maintain a constant internet connection. So yeah, you know, there's a lot of things there that I think gave people the wrong idea. And uh, of course, your files are still stored in the same way they always have, always have been. Um, I've been told that if you stop subscribing to the service, uh, worst case scenario, you just you just won't be able to open up your files. So if you've got um, if you've got uh, PSD files that you've created, for example, and uh, you discontinue your Creative Cloud, and you you know you basically won't be able to open up Photoshop, so you won't be able to open those files anymore. But they'll they'll still be there. They won't go anywhere. Um, <clears throat> I have a couple of older versions of Photoshop, so you know I actually uh, have a license for CS4 and I don't know, like CS3, I believe. No, sorry, CS5 and CS3, so something like that. Anyways, so I still have those licenses. So yeah, if you have older versions of Photoshop that you've purchased in the past, uh, you can still use them. They still work, and uh, looks like just Adobe is going to be going to the cloud thing from here on here on out. So when CS7 comes out, none of us is going to have a choice as to how we can get it. We won't be able to go to the store and buy a box copy anymore. We'll have to subscribe to the cloud service. Um, which that brings up yet another thing. Uh, the only other thing I guess I'd be concerned about is, of course, Adobe, you, you do pay on a monthly basis, but Adobe requires that you sign up for a one-year term. So... Yeah, shame on you, Adobe, for that. That's, it's very, uh, it's very, it's very cell phone contract-ish. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. That that just kind of kind of sucks, actually. I do wish they would just give us an option to go month to month on it. Um, I think that's kind of lame that they they're like, oh, we're going to hold you into this one year uh, term. So that's not cool, really. Um, but I do still think that there's more good than bad to be said about the Creative Cloud. Uh, maybe I'm just too much of an optimist. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> um, definitely write me in the comments below, share me your thoughts. I'd like to, I'd like to know, you know. I'm not by any means paid by Adobe. Um, I'm just another little ant as far as Adobe is concerned. 
Um, but personally, I'm just curious to know what everyone thinks about it. So yeah, write me in the comments below. And, uh, you know, maybe if, uh, maybe if this video turns into like a, you know, really, really big thing, maybe someone in Adobe will listen. So until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, Photog Day the Great, signing off.